Hello, I'm Adam Watson, Digital Learning Coordinator at Shelby County Public Schools in Shelbyville, Kentucky. Welcome to our vodcast series, Shelby Speaks, Looking Forward. We chose this subtitle for two reasons. First, we are looking forward to the time when we can be face-to-face -face with our students again, but we are also looking forward in time to the educational future of our district. We have two questions that we sent around for our vodcast. What are Shelby teachers learning in the middle of this non-traditional instruction experience? And the second, how will that experience transfer to, as well as transform, their classrooms when they are once again inside their schools? Today in this episode, we're here with Carrie Girardi, who teaches fifth grade at Southside Elementary. Carrie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Hey, well, let's jump into our first question here. What were some structures that you already had in place that helped you transition to this unplanned, extended, non-traditional instructional experience? I, in the beginning of the year, and really every day, really emphasize relationship with my kids. Um, beginning of the year, I do a lot of teamwork, Kagan, cooperative learning structures. We have morning meetings every day where they can bring anything they want to the table. Um, I try to eat lunch with them, meet with them one-on-one -on -one in conferences, so we get to know each other, we have a relationship. Um, I try to create a safe, mistake-loving environment for my students so they can fall flat on their face and pick themselves up and be okay with it because as humans, that's what we do. We make mistakes and learn from them. Right. Um, I love the mistake loving environment. That's, <laughs> that's one of my favorite new phrases that you gave me. Go ahead. So I really emphasize that relationship so they feel safe. And I feel like that's really helped um, the online part of the learning be successful um, as we are quarantined at home. Gotcha. Well, with that in mind, what were some unexpected challenges that you or your students had uh, going into NTI? Things you didn't plan for or didn't think to plan for? Um, we, of course, had things that were planned for, like communication barriers, and um, some of my students do not have internet. So, we, you know, we were able to do some digital and then some paper um, assignments. The biggest thing that was unplanned for was I had many of my students who uh, would stay at a relative's or, or leave for a, an unannounced time. Uh, which had me very worried. And so really I spent that first week uh, making sure they were safe and healthy. Um, but I would say that was the one of the biggest challenges I faced. Right, just tracking it down. Well, again, it's just when you're face-to-face -face classroom instruction time, you usually can look around the room and the 20-some-odd kids are there, right? But uh, in this environment, if they're grandmas or their other parent or whoever, they may, yeah, that making sure that you understand kind of those transitions is is part of the new routine to the new normal, if you will, as far as classroom teaching. Well, I want to move to the the big uh, meat and potatoes part of our broadcast. Our question is about what is a new tool or strategy that you're using during this NTI time that, that you plan to utilize, that when you transition back to your brick and mortar school, what are ways that um, you hope some of the things you're learning right now will change your classroom experience in the future? So I used Zoom. Um, which I'm sure we're all familiar with by now, but I had created um, personalized learning through my Zoom schedule. So I will share that. Perfect. Can you see it? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I created a Zoom schedule to really meet the needs of my students um, and continue to personalize their learning and, and meet their needs and any fix any misconceptions, or even for a couple of my learners, um, push them forward through the learning process after they've mastered a skill. So I created office hours um, every day where they can jump in on the same Zoom meeting. I only send out one Zoom meeting link a day. Um, they can jump in, ask me questions. They're not a, they don't have to worry about their peers listening. It's really just that one-on-one -on -one time um, with them. Um, and again, building that relationship, making sure um, they're feeling good and they're doing okay in this time. Um, and then I created small groups where I divided my kids up into about five per five um, five kids per group. Um, and then I have my whole group time, which is where I really do my my math time and I teach something new and assign something. And then the next day, they can use that small group time to work with me in a small group to make sure they understand the new content. Um, I really it was important to me, the, well, the most successful part of the office hours, um, the most successful part of the schedule is the office hours. Um, mm -hmm. They have used that. Um, I'm very busy and uh, on the computer for almost, I mean, really the whole day. By the time I meet them, um, go back 
like do the one-on-one -on -one process and answer any questions they have or um, reteach something. So they've really taken um, they've really taken a liking to the office hours, and it's been the most successful part of the schedule. Gotcha. And I'm hearing about personalized learning from that then, because you're really able to reach them one-on-one -on -one like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I figured um, it using Zoom, it wouldn't seem likely when you get back into the classroom, but I think it would be a great way to connect with students after school if they have questions on any assignments. Um, so I can keep like these office hours after school since I have to be there anyway. I might as well be able to reach them and I can see them face to face versus just a phone call. Um, I even thought it'd be a great way to interview experts for any projects or um, parent teacher conferences. If, if a parent can't make it, it would be much easier and I think even more personal to have that conversation face to face versus over the phone. I love that. And, and again, it's like you're, you're meeting the challenges you had in the past. You know, if a parent couldn't come in, for example, but maybe they could get to a computer or a phone, right? right. That would be a way that they could call in. Um, I love the idea of you virtualizing your office hours and you talking about using that as a model going forward because that would be. Uh, great, you know, and if parents know that look if we do homework as soon as you get home and we get stuck on that math problem And I can't help you and figure it out We can go to mr. Rarty and just go into the whatever the tool may end up being uh, Teleconference wise let's say it's zoom and be able to answer and, and ask those questions. I mean, that's that's fantastic I love it. Okay. Well, let's go into the last <laughs> the last question, which is um, You know going backwards in time if you could go back in time and Give some advice to your pre NTI self. What would it be? Well, as I told you before, we are a mistake-loving classroom, um, and we really focus on the growth mindset. So if I had to go back in time and tell myself um, and encourage myself, I would remind myself that my kids, my students, and myself, we um, are very capable of facing any challenge that comes our way. Um, they are intelligent. They have grit. Uh, they're courageous. Um, they can really, They can really look at something that's difficult in the face and tackle it if they want to and have that growth mindset. And I would just remind myself that we can do it because at Southside, we are smart, strong, and selfless. I love that. And I also love grit, which is one of my favorite words. So you get bonus points for mentioning that. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I want to thank you today, Carrie. You've done a great job of sharing your professional learning and, and talking about the different structures. So, so thanks again for making the time for us today. You're welcome. So be sure to check out our Shelby Speaks Looking Forward playlist on our Shelby County Public School YouTube channel for more of these vodcast episodes. And until then, thanks for watching.